again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrett. And if I start doing this through the show, it's because I have something wrong with my eye. I've had an eye thing for a week and every once in a while it just like goes, ugh. And I got a bit of a <laughs> nose from the so two degree weather, so don't mind us. We'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> um, now I feel like I just did a Trump move. <laughs> um, so we are officially halfway through the month that shall remain nameless. We are indeed. So we're almost there. A couple it, more weeks, we'll be in the March. I, I, I'm, I'm putting a pin in that April trip. Uh, yes. Although I have to, so, uh, oh, I'm not allowed to. We're going to Florida together. We are, so we will be missing. So we will be missing a week. <laughs> you'll have to do a week without me because I'm going to Florida early and then you'll be in Florida with me. And yes. we'll just fill you in when we get Oh, okay. I did not trip. know how much uh, secrecy there yeah. was, but I booked entirely the wrong tickets. Oh, no. I'm going to have to... Uh, Could- no, they were like, they're, they're like four times the price yeah, that they're supposed to be. I was wondering why you were doing that. We'll talk. But, but we'll figure it yeah, out. Yeah, I so. thought the same thing. I was like, I don't understand why she got these expensive tickets. I can, right here, there's tickets. Because so, I had I on know. my to-do list, buy the tickets today because <laughs> I'm going to have coffee with Tammy and she will ask. No, so yeah. I was like, get it done this weekend. It's and that good. was the price on that day. And then the next day I was like, wait, I could get yeah. them for a third we'll of this. We'll figure it out. So I don't know, but um, anyways, beach um, time sounds good. It'll be good. beach time, tan time, happy time, cocktail time, you know, all the things. All the time. So all we did not plan this show at all. No. I have no, no idea what news Tammy brought. I have not. Wait, this is how we usually go. So I just was in the general um, news um, since last week's show, uh, or maybe since the week before. So our school superintendent, John Goldhart, resigned. Uh, who promised the district yeah. he would stay, stay for at least five years, did yeah. not do that. I feel like, you know, maybe we should well, get those c- commitments in, well, in writing. I, I, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, you know, can we write contracts that are a little less um, onerous to the taxpayers and the people investing in this stuff? Because this is from the things. So the, the original article said um, from this from the school district that he would step down effective today, Friday. So this was last Friday at 5 p.m. But will remain an employee of the district until June 30th. During this transition, Goldhart's duties and responsibilities will be curtailed. This announcement comes following an amicable transition employment agreement with all parties involved. Well, I don't know about you, but it's not very amicable to me, the taxpayer. And, and also, if the duties are curtailed, the, the question begs to be asked. That was my first <laughs> thought, like, the, the duties and responsibilities will be curtailed, but you'll get your full pay, mm. and we pay severance out to people who quick, and we pay you all your back um, stuff, your back vacation, vacation and everything. So and... that bothers me. So just so you know, so then today's article, because they now, um, since the union leader, so it wasn't in there, um, the school board up voted late last night why the school board meetings go to beyond a, me- a midnight just shows how dysfunctional they are because i'm sorry the school board sh- should not be involved in that much no if they have to have meetings that go beyond midnight um they have picked jen ellis who was the principal of Southside middle school for four years and then before that was mountain view middle school in goffstown principal um so she's got extensive she is the interim superintendent okay so she'll, until they hire a new superintendent. Um, but in this article, it says, Goldheart will continue to be paid through April 15th, according to a separation agreement obtained by the right to know request. He will write a transition memo to help guide his successor, outlining his work and tying up loose ends. So I thought, let's go with the April 15th not date. Okay. That's two months. It takes the superintendent two months to write a transition memo and... Cl- tie up loose ends so two months salary that's about thirty thousand dollars and that makes me wonder so are we paying him through april 15th or june 30th or are we just going to pay his health insurance through june 30th i'm like come on you know inevitably i am 100 percent confident that if someone is getting screwed in this uh, it's, it's a taxpayer. taxpayer it always is speaking of screwing the taxpayers <laughs> well this isn't really screwing the taxpayers but it was of the same mindset in my mind. Anyways, um, there was a, in Saturday, Paul Feely City Hall article talked about um, the former in-town board. Yeah, well, that way. was a big thing. Uh, so suddenly, and I mean, and I say suddenly, and it's not suddenly. So but just to fill folks in from back home, in case you're not following the story. So in town, Manchester was a private nonprofit yep. that somehow had this uh, special relationship yep. with the city of Manchester, where they were doing 
services for them? Yep, they do, they took care of maintaining, like they did all those flowers downtown, they clean, they're the ones that are out there hosing down the sidewalk, they pick up all this, mm-hmm. and the downtown the businesses, this morning was, it, oh, it's disgusting. So, um, so they do the things. <laughs> frozen, three frozen patches disgusting. of puke, I mean, um, come on. And then from the city in return, they would get about $258,000 worth of funding. So, I mean, that's not a lot. That is a big amount of money. But then when you think about probably what they're doing, and then in town would also raise money themselves from fundraisers. Like they would put on, um, you know, they did the Christmas parade. Well, that that was in town Manchester's job and they would take care of that. And then they sell those flags. So I'm like, okay, so they're kind of like the Chamber of Commerce, but without the businesses just to keep downtown Vibrant, Vibrant was the word. So back last year. Um, so no one was paying. I'll just sum this yeah. up. No one was really paying attention. Right. And then at some stage, you know, uh, everyone was like, huh? How's yeah. this the organization hundreds of thousands of dollars it in was, debt? And I don't even think it was hundreds of thousands. I think the last thing I read was. Um, so they had a line of credit for about 60000 Yeah, it right? says according to. Uh, let's now, see. Now, let me just give you folks a little lesson yeah. here. If you are a nonprofit. Do not ever get a line of credit. Right. It's the kiss of death. Right. If you cannot run your organization based on uh, donations and a good fundraising right. strategy well, and all of that. I'm not defending in town, but I'm thinking about it this way. The city com- has a contract with them for $258,000 that gets paid out, I believe, monthly. So if you had a line of credit so that you could fund things because every month you're going to get the payment, you know, maybe, right? I agree with you. I would never. Well, do. clearly that wasn't what was happening right. because otherwise he wouldn't be in the hole by $60,000. Well, $60, and so um, back in, I think, October, the city stopped making payments to them because there was a whole there was a whole thing. Like, um, in town Manchester changed accounting firms, so then the books got like one. Because, Someone looked at the numbers. No, I think, That's what happened. No, I think what happened is because I've seen it when you try to go from one version to another, like, this accountant looked at, did the reports this way, and this accountant did the reports this way, and all of a sudden there started to be like, wait a minute, something's not, I don't get it. Like, what? something's not right. So then uh, then the city got all up in arms, because, you know, the city does everything perfectly, and there's never any weird money things going on there. Um, then they went to in-town Manchester and said, you know, we need these reports, and they couldn't kind of put them together because they couldn't figure out what the hell the two accountants were, and to hire an, uh, a, an outside auditing firm was more money, and since the city had shut off paint, like, it became this vicious rolling ball that couldn't stop. Sarah Beaudry resigned. She said, I'll take full responsibility for not paying close enough attention, blah, blah, blah. Um, but what bothered me when I was reading this article is Leon Fren- Lafreniere, he's the finance guy from the city who ultimately would be responsible. You know, everybody said there, there, there was- is no ultimately right. responsible well, when it comes to what, government. That's what irks me. He May says, I remind you, 9-11, people got promoted. Um, <laughs> well, he, he, Fauci's still not fired. The board, the, the remaining board members, when they, first of all, they did the city went to the remaining board members and said we need a pl- plan of action like how are you going to fix this and they had one and they gave it back to the city right now keep in mind these are all volunteers working full-time jobs and everything and then without any discussion or any feedback or any more questions the city just went nope we're done with the contract and i thought well that's not really how contracts work first <laughs> i think contracts are contracts and you were contracted through june to pay this money that you haven't paid since you know okay wait so the city's reneging on a contract with another entity i'm not sure if i'm okay with that um it but the attitude from the city that like well they're not at all responsible even though this it says i believe somewhere that the city is supposed to get reports from in town all the time, yet never, never asked for any. Where if they had been, I'm maybe not, they would have. Maybe they would have noticed, like, hey, this could earlier. be a little bit of a problem. Maybe we should try to find a better way. Um, but to, this attitude that, like, well, we should sever a contract because this entity is in debt, and you know, is it meeting expectations? And I thought, okay, can we end the contract with the school district then? Because they're in debt and they're not meeting my expectations. I mean, since- Well, they're not even meeting their own well, I mean, metrics. Right. <laughs> you know, like, so city government can, can go into debt or, I mean, how many times have we read over the years where they're like, oh, 
we budgeted, you know, $100,000 for that, but oh, we spent 180. Well, we'll just have to go over here to this pot of money. And yeah, there's never any accountability from the government, but they put this immense specific accountability on everybody else. Um, so, just another way just your thing. government is blindly hypocritical. So imagine <laughs> the downtown entities, the business owners and the property owners in downtown that are paying this extra tax because they pay their regular property taxes and this extra surcharge, which is to fund the $258,000 so that the streets are cleaned, et cetera, et cetera. Except they're still paying the tax right. and no one is doing the work because there is nobody to do the work. So who's cleaning the streets? Who's going to plant the flowers? I mean, on How the West side, it's We Heart West. So right. you you know. But you know what I mean? Like, imagine if you're paying a double tax or, a, you know, an extra right. tax I mean, for specific services that are no longer being provided and there's no, what's the plan? I mean, maybe I'd like to, as a taxpayer, like to see what the city's plan is since they were demanding in town come up with a plan. What's the city's plan? And, and by severing the contract, what does that do to in town's debt? Like, how are they supposed to recoup that? Shouldn't the city somehow be like, okay. I mean, a lot of that's really going to depend on what the contracts right. say. And, uh, you know, we, if, if we had a little more transparency mm. in things, that would be really useful. Yeah. I've actually discovered a new avenue of malfeasance oh um, where it's becoming a, a trend to settle disputes mm -hmm. that people have with uh, with various municipalities and uh, corporate entities uh, that are our government, but they're all corporations, of course. And uh, they are now including gag orders as a- Like you can't talk um, about this. As a yeah. routine sort of thing. Now, I actually learned about one uh, that had to, I'm not going to name names because there is this gag order, but <laughs> we, we talked about it weeks ago. Uh, everyone knows who it is, so it's kind of weird that they did it. But in that case, because it's a D D C Y F case, mm. uh, the judges now put a gag order on that. Um, I heard there are uh, several... Um, sort of right to know cases. I'm gonna say it, that would be J.R. Hall's case. I'm, oh, did I say that out loud? Was that, see, I'm not <laughs> obligated to be quiet about it. I'm not part of any gang um, order. Well, you know, so so uh, that is something people should take a look right. at. I mean, we should want to be trending towards more transparency so that we can have more accountability. Yep. And once again, they're trying to run, every time we try and expand the right to know, uh, they, they, run know interference they, there. they run interference. And so now they're doing it through these private contracts. And I know when, when I settled my case, right, back in 2014, mm. that was actually a stipulation right. they tried to put in. And I was like, there is no way Right. On Earth, I'm agreeing to this, and they were like, "Oh, right, right, right." Of okay, course. we'll just okay, take that we'll part. We'll take that part. Well, out. and I mean, looking at this, because this is kind of how it's funny that you say that, because that's exactly how I feel. I like in the Goldheart situation, I'm like, why if he's effective immediately, not working, are we going to pay him? You know, be an employee through June 30th or April 15th or whatever, right? I was like, and then I heard from other people chattering, and whether it's true or not, that well, he didn't voluntarily, because I'm like, we're going to pay severance to people. Only the government pays severance to people who quit their jobs. Right? Yes, because you will get, uh, I mean, it depends. If you're a CEO, you might get a golden handshake, but that's typically something that's negotiated right. up front in your employment contract. And why are we- But put, if you are, you know, if you're dismissed why are we putting for a cause, right. or, if you're, uh, or if you quit to go take a better job where you're well, moving closer if, to your family they, or if, whatever the reason if is. If these are things stipulated in um, the employment contracts, well then as a taxpayer, I'd like to be able to see all, readily, easily, very easily see oh every all of the every state contract. contract should be it should a just public be and document. i shouldn't have to dig should like i shouldn't have to be a story it should be open sourced it should uh just be available so i then, think that's really one of the things that we can add value to the state of new hampshire is just to say hey why is this so well let's and like just in this be case, transparent people are what saying do you, oh, if you have nothing to hide the, you have nothing to fear people are saying that um it was a it wasn't him quitting that he was being pushed out and this was the agreement they came to and i'm thinking okay but as again as a taxpayer i would like to know what's going on I would like to know, and I'm tired of seeing that everything, well, this is a personnel matter. Well, this is the, oh, you so know, like. this is the catch all, right? I know. So, so, uh, but that, that court case was overturned in 2020. Uh, 
to very little fanfare because, of course, everything was locked down. So there were like three of us at the court uh, monitoring any of this. Mm -hmm. But uh, they are not allowed to just pro forma, just say it's a personnel matter, therefore you're not allowed to know. Um, there's supposed to be a balancing act that's supposed to be between the interests of the public who is paying the bill and whatever the personnel issue is. And that balancing act is supposed to default or lean a little more heavily towards the public mm. and the public's right to know. Right. And quite frankly, the New Hampshire Constitution is better on this issue than the legislative laws, the RSAs we've written on this issue. I think we should get rid of 91A and just go with the Constitution, which basically says open you are trip. open, transparent, accountable to the accessible to the people. And just period. That's it. We want to know something, we should know it. Uh, Lori Ortolano, who's been doing a lot of the work down in Nashua, she just won a big case. I haven't read the decision yet, mm -hmm. but maybe I'll come and tell you about it next week. Um, but if I recall correctly, it had something to do with um, with actual costs. Because part of the problem is we you, you have to sue, it's expensive. The courts say, yeah, government, come on. You totally should have disclosed that information. Right. We don't know why you were sitting on your hands for for two years, um, but then the person who brought the lawsuit is still stuck with two hundred thousand yeah. dollars plus in legal fees, and that's not how it should work. If they are found that they did not do what they were constitutionally required to do, mm -hmm. then they should pay the fees. Now, also, that's not fair in sense of matter because then in the end, it's just us it's, you would, paying right, it we're again. We're the ones ultimately paying so, it again. So the reason why we harp on accountability is incentives matter, the government should be doing what they're supposed to be doing. They don't, and when they don't, the penalty does not it doesn't fall matter, on right. them. So I think what we need to do is we need to start building in a lot more personal accountability in, in a police scenario that's getting rid of qualified immunity, that mm -hmm. is saying, oh, you know what? No, you don't actually get to hide behind the shield literally with the police, the shield, but the shield of government for any employee in any jurisdiction, yeah. right? You should, um, you, if, if you're doing shady stuff, you should be held accountable. I mean, we're currently living in a world mm -hmm. where people are de facto lying yep. about All everything. Sorts of things. And, and it's literal fraud. Um, science papers, so quasi peer reviewed science papers, which apparently the people who peer review it do not have access to the underlying data, which means it's not really peer reviewed. But they are now putting the opposite of what the data actually proves in the study, in the abstract. So if you're someone like me who's curious about what's been going on, I will go read the source material. And sometimes I'm like, oh, that's not really that what I understood, how this and this and this and this and this fit together. And then I'm very confused because I'm like, oh, I guess I'm a dummy and I got it wrong. And then I'm like, ah, let me power through the actual thing. And I'll be like, Oh, they're just blatantly yep. <laughs> saying opposite things in the abstract in the hope that people will only read that and not delve deeper. And it's problematic because we have a genuine accountability yep. problem in yep. this country. And I don't know if you saw this. I, I'm off on a tangent yeah, okay. here. but So the Department of Defense okay. has its own data sources that they track how they vaccinate their their um, military members mi military members okay there is uh that data was actually publicly available or it was accessible by a large enough group of people the data sets that came out of that for the past year are alarming and shocking it's bad in terms of vaccine harm mm. and vaccine deaths amongst the military so that information started to bubble up. Oh, the next that. second, that can't data that. got taken down. There was a report that came out that said, oh no, that data is totally wrong. We, we, we were doing it wrong since 2016 and oops, we're gonna fix it now. And then they came out with some other random data. So my question is, do we believe that? 
seems oh. unlikely that they would so, have done it wrong for seven years. Although it is the government, it, so. I guess it's possible. Or should we believe the data that was there that they that didn't know people were not, looking at right. that suddenly gets retracted right. and uh, tells a story that they don't want out. Now, when we started with all this COVID crap years and years ago at this stage. Back in the before time. In the before times. <laughs> um, one of the things we, we harped on is you have to look at both the seen and the unseen. Mm. And so we talked about when you harm people economically, it's not the pandemic that did the harm. It's the government's it, yes. response to the pandemic. So in today's paper, overdose rates mm. in Manchester, Nashua, highest since 2018. We said you are going to see an increase in drug use. Yep. I know there's an increase in alcoholism. Yep. There's a vast increase in suicides, including well, there child were, suicides. Yes. That has never been a thing. There um, was an article, I think, yesterday's union leader, maybe the day before, saying how um, there are the the requests for mental health um, services has has risen like crazy in the state since, since COVID. Here uh, in in the Your Health section of today's paper, uh, women's heart attacks. It's yep. really interesting to see that you will uh, you can go to CarlaGarrick.com because I did a compilation of all of these ads. Um, one of the things you can see is they might not tell you the truth. But they are propagandists. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, oh, crap, there's this tell out here. And we need to uh, start to massage people's brains to accommodate or to understand this in a new and different way. So the current trend, because there is, uh, there is an indication that the myocarditis that people are getting is neither rare. Mm -hmm. uh, it's killing children. Uh, two that I read about this morning. Uh, 16 year old boys who literally just dropped yep. dead from heart yep. attacks. Um, so the propaganda that you can find uh, on social media includes heart attacks are now caused by um, leaky by, vegetables, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> by, by by marijuana, by climate change, climate by change is causing making heart your bed yeah, like shaking do your duvet. Uh, snow plow, uh, snow work, which actually you know, probably, is pretty is strenuous. strenuous that, so yeah. I could see that happening. But you know what? If you're shaking out your duvet if and that, you're having a that, heart attack, that's probably something else. Um, and now they're starting to talk about women heart attacks, which also used to be fairly rare. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that is a tell for people who want to sort of start to to measure or to to be like, oh, maybe I should be questioning things yes. a little, you know, more actively myself. And then on the mental health front, same paper, a look into loneliness. Yep. And so, the government's response to the pandemic also caused this vast spike in mental yep. health issues. Apparently, I mean, it, it's obvious when you look at just gen, just people you know in your own lives that like not everybody can cope. Not everybody has the same coping mechanism. So when, you know, when somebody who lives alone is forced to stay home by themselves and not be able to interact with other people for periods of time, apparently it's become obvious that that causes longer long-term peril for them. Yeah, it's 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 genuinely it's pretty awful. And I they, I and was reading something just a week or so. I forget who I was having this conversation with, but it was disturbing because they were talking about um teenagers and how a large percentage of teenagers feel they have no self-worth. They see no pros nothing like down the road in their life to do, you know. And I think, God, when I was like a teenager in high school, the things you wanted to do, I was like, so should I pack up and move to Florida today? Let's go to Florida today. You know, but, like, but even something as simple as, hey, I'm going to get my driver's license. No. So there's been a precipitous drop off. Like I, I know when I was 15 and a half, yep. I was like, when I turn 16, <laughs> I'm getting my license. Of course, I was like almost in law school, so I needed a car. But but um, I think I read recently, it's, it's the... the I want to say the average age now is twenty one. Right, it's or like some. So we've taken. There was something the other day. Um, I think I think Louis might have posted it or commented about somebody who not this wasn't in Manchester, but somebody who had called the 
was concerned that their 12 year old, their neighbor's 12 year old was home alone by themselves. Oh no, not possible. <laughs> and should they call the police? And, oh and I was like, oh my God. So that makes me go back. I'm like, what was I doing when I was 12? And I was like, my God, I think I was like, I, I was almost in well, like 10th or 11th. Like what? You didn't. But, but also, I mean, latchkey kids was a thing. And maybe, maybe, you know, I, I don't know where you are, but I'm a Gen Xer and um, I'm starting to feel like the Gen X, you know, we were the last people who didn't wear helmets. Right, you we were the last ones when, who could fight. Like, if it was dark, you, you know, you were supposed we're, to go home. Right, like, I suppose it's dark, it's time to go, go home. home. Maybe it's someone time. will feed me. And you knew to, like, maybe they'll feed you. If right. not, you feed yourself. And then you go to bed and guess what? You knew to get up. Like, it just, this yeah. was just the... Um, I think the safetyism has basically destroyed, uh, destroyed like a whole generation. And if we want to get over this hump, we're going to have to instill a sense of self ownership yep. in people, which gives you a driven sense of purpose. Yep. Um, you know, everyone has something to contribute. Yes. Uh, we are all creative humans, and um, and you know, honestly, if it's moving towards more automation and robots and stuff, that could be a huge opportunity right. for people to do more fun and interesting things. things that they actually want to do instead of having to go do that specific job because it was the only one. There. So I think that's actually the challenge is people don't know what they want to do. And I'll tell you why, because one of these articles <laughs> actually talked about our collective mental health. Mm, it's not. And it's like, it's there is no such thing. It's the same problem that we have with homelessness. Right. It's not homelessness. There are individual people and you have to go fix each one that person you right. can't just be like but if, oh but it's if you just, just hire, blanket right, thing. we hire a coordinator and those people go away but when they do blanket things then they can make these vast and huge problems that are literally unsolvable because the way they're approaching it doesn't work because it's not this it's one by one by one and that we have to actually engage right with each person and each person has to figure out what their mission in life is. Uh, my mission for the next six weeks or four weeks, I guess it's only about four weeks now, um, is to get Victoria Sullivan yep. elected um, alderman in Ward 9 to fill the seat that was vacated by with the passing of former representative and alderman Barbara Shaw. Um, that election is on Tuesday, March 15th. If you'd like to help, you can go to victoriaformanchester.com victoria for for manchester.com um she's going to be doing looking for door knockers to come out and help spread the word um she can always use money there's a fundraiser, uh, there's a fundraiser tomorrow night wednesday the 16th at stark brewing at uh starting around 5 5 30 it will follow the new hampshire house session at the double tree tomorrow um and it is brought to you in part by the new hampshire house beer caucus so it'll be a good time it's 25 dollars a person it's a great way to help great way to meet more people if you want to get involved more politically here local um that's all we got we're going to run out of time he's going to give us the big oopsie um if you have any questions you can always email us at manchtalk at gmail.com otherwise stay warm stay cool depending on which day it is and we will see you next week bye take care